Hello and welcome to Capture and Convert Online Leads. I'm Nancy Gardner. Hello, hello. Today we're going to discuss how to better get a response and a result from our online leads effort. You know, those leads we love to hate, the ones we spend lots of money on but track little return on investment. Seems like no one's getting rich on these except for the people selling them to us. Okay, let's take a look at what we're going to need to be doing. First, let's look at what the numbers are telling us because they are significant and they can direct us. That's why we look at this kind of data. First off, and we've known this for a couple of years, 94% of buyers and sellers are online first. Okay, they've been there. We know this. They, they're looking, doing research, uh, looking at what's available, what at, looking at our digital marketing, whatever, before they ever contact anybody in real estate. Now, here's the significant piece of this, and I want you to pay attention because it is important to your marketing uh, efforts. And, that's, and that is that 70% of these people that are online, these buyers and sellers, are looking at agents in their sphere. Yep, and they all know five or six agents. We know that. This is the way it is. And so what we want to understand about this, and this is what all the new research is showing, is that there are fewer leads to be gleaned from online efforts, okay? These are people, the majority of these people are in our sphere, and they're looking at agents they know, okay? So that's why we have to look and recraft at our efforts online, not only for that elusive online lead that may be out there without anybody, but also for what the, the source of most of our business, which is our sphere of influence. And all of them, whether they are in your sphere or they are, they are not attached to anybody, they are all looking at your online profiles. And that's what you want to take away. Your profile is going to be your first opportunity to snag either group. Okay. Now, we also know that, again, in addition to looking at your profile, we know that they expect immediate response. And they want a response, and this is very important, that demonstrates your interest in them. Your market knowledge using local data. And again, one more time, it's about them, not us. And we've, we just, we just got to get our arms around this. Okay, so let's look, you know, let's consider this. Because you know what? When we're customers... We know the difference between a good experience and a bad one, but I don't know what happens, and I'm, I'm just not able to figure out what happens to us when we walk into the office because we don't seem to be able to translate any of what that feels like, you know, to be on that end of things to what we do. You know, talking to someone you don't know, you have no impression or knowledge of, and you certainly don't have any no loyalty to. So that's what we want to really try to work on today because that's going to have a lot to do with your the responses you get. So let's start, okay, where most people start with their impression of us. And again, that's your online profile. Now, you've got a handout for this, all right? And I want you to know that if you've been on previous webinars and you've gotten this handout before, I have uh, added more scripting to your video approach in your intro um, with your profile. So check it out. Don't think it's just like the last one. It isn't. Okay, first thing we need to know about online profiles is that you have eight seconds. That's it. And this is according to Microsoft Research, published uh, January 2017. What they were trying to do was to find out what our average attention span is online. Turns out, we give everything about eight seconds. They compared that to a goldfish. Turns out they have an attention span of nine seconds, so they must be seeing something we're not. Excuse me, but anyway, we don't. what that's saying is we don't have much time, so it better be good. There are four components of an online profile. Please, 
please do not write a profile that looks like a Dead Sea Scrolls. We don't read that way anymore. We just don't. The Internet's changed that. Okay, so understand that when you put that profile together, the first part of it, and, and I'm going to say to you, this profile update is getting agents a lot of closed business. They are really seeing an increase in their results from this update right here. So first part of it is your intro, your video. You know, you're, it, it, now if you are camera shy, and none of us really like it, okay, you don't have to do anything um, on a professional level. Remember, we're only looking at maybe 20 seconds, give or take. Um, you don't have a lot of time. You know, there are a lot of people selling videos out there that want you doing these long, drawn-out things. So I'm telling you, nobody's watching them. Unless you're going to get on your neighbor's roof, set your hair on fire, and jump off that roof into their swimming pool with holding a puppy, nobody's watching this for that length of time. So get your head screwed on right about that. We don't have much time, so we got to make it good. So anyway, your video is an intro, okay? And it can be, you know, a statement, you know, Hi, I'm Nancy Gardner. I've been licensed in uh, Northern Virginia since 1989. In the last 12 months, I've closed, I'm making this all up, guys, you know, uh, $30 million worth of business for a total of, you know, 45 transactions. I speak uh, English, French, and Spanish. I get 85% of my business from repeat and referral. I personalize my client's experience based on the amount of detail, market data, uh, support, uh, and a vendor help they need. So it depends on you in terms of how much you want from me, but I am prepared to deliver that. You know, something like that. You've got a script there. Use it. Work around it. Internalize it. Make it yours. If you're just not going to do the video, uh, I'm sorry it does make you look dated, um, but you just you can write it out in a statement. All right? That's the first part of your profile. The next part is your production summary. And what I tell people to do is use the last 12 months. You can use the prior year. You could say in 2017, I close, blah, 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 blah. Now, you can break your production down into more meaningful metrics if your metrics are good. If they're not, don't touch them. Stay away from it. But the metrics that people look at today are your average days on market. Now, again, you've got to give them something to compare that to because they don't know if 30 days is good or bad. So if your average days on market is 25, and you know, then you compare that to a market average of 64, whatever it is that gives them a reference point. The next thing they want to know is your percentage of listings sold. Are you just you know, buying listings by telling the seller you can deliver pricing that the market doesn't, doesn't support? It's going to show up in your percentage of listings sold. And believe me, don't think that a bunch of price reductions are going to get you through this because people are smarter than that. They're looking at property history, and they're seeing that. Anybody today that thinks they're going to do, win this by outsmarting the consumer is dumb. I don't know how else to tell you this. They're dumb. Okay. Now, people say, Nance, how often do I update this? I would update it quarterly. That's what I would do in terms of my production. Now, your reviews, you know, list five or six of them, whatever you think is appropriate. Make sure they're your recent reviews. And then at the bottom, you can have a link that says to see all of Nancy's reviews, something like that. If they want to read on, they can read on. And please don't be afraid if you get a less than stellar review. Um, nobody expects people to be perfect all of the time. And it does show that you're upfront and transparent, which is a word we know that people value. So don't, you know, don't be afraid of that. You know, a lot of times when they get, you know, nothing but glowing reviews, they don't really believe them. You know, they think you're, you know, you're sorting them. So um, don't be afraid of that. And the last part, and this is in a bulleted list, and it's very important that you bullet this because we're not going to read your narrative, Okay. You're not a famous author, and nobody's going to read what you've written there. So do it in bullets, and you can say I'm, a, you know, member of NAR and your, you know, your state and local associations and all that good stuff. You can say I've gotten, 
you know, designation from Graduate Real Estate Institute, CRM, you know, whatever you've got there, put it down. Also put down your community involvement, whether you're a member of the PTA, the Humane Association, whatever it is, okay, put it down there. Because they look at that and decide whether or not you truly are a local agent. And local agent, being a local agent, as we will discuss in a minute, is more and more important to people. So get it in there. That's your profile, pure and simple. That's, that's all it is. It doesn't need to be long and drawn out. No one will read it. But you are getting to the pertinent information that people want when they're deciding whether or not to contact a realtor, okay? And even online people will read this. The, the uh, agents that I work with, between June of last year and the end of the year, I got everybody's profile updated, okay? When we got to the end of the year and we were doing business planning, another favorite of you guys, um, I learned that they had closed a minimum of six transactions, maximum eight transactions. These are closed transactions from people they did not know who came to them online and said, I read your profile. I want to talk to you about listing my house. I read your profile, and I'm interested in buying a property in your area. That's what they told them. One agent told me that a woman called she was looking for an agent, you know, to list, and she was head of some department at some big corporation. And when she, you know, did her listing presentation and gave her her written marketing calendar, which I've told you all to do, um, the woman said, you're going to do all this. And she said, if I don't do it, you can terminate. And she took it to her office, made copies of it, gave it out to everybody in her department, said, anybody needs a realtor this year? This is the one I would recommend you use. Don't underestimate the power of this stuff, guys. This is all about the new consumer. This is all making it about what they want. Okay, so there's your profile. If you haven't done it, get it done. It's costing you business. Okay. Next thing we want to understand is empathy. Because it seems that when it comes to dealing with people online, we don't have any of it. Now, clearly defined... Empathy is the action of understanding, being aware of, being sensitive to, and vicariously experiencing the feelings, thoughts, and experiences of another. Bottom line, if we can't imagine what a consumer's mindset might be like, it's going to be very hard for us to deliver the type of response they're looking for. Remember, they don't know you. They have no loyalty to you. We're starting from scratch here. We've got to earn this. And we seem to think they owe us something. That's why a lot of responses come across. They owe us nothing. They know, don't know us from Adam. And we've got to wrap our heads around this if we're going to be effective. Okay, so let's take a look at what they, they're looking for. All right. In crafting your responses, please understand that nice only goes so far. The way you're going to build a relationship with these people, again, starting from scratch, is not by bonding. They've got friends. Oh, I promise you they do. And what we want to be is the real estate professional that they believe they can you know, hire to do the job they need doing. So the first order of business is to listen. You know the old saying, we have two ears and one mouth, and we should use them within that same proportion. I'm not so sure that's enough. I think we should qu quiet down a lot more than that. But I, I promise you, I think listening is one of the best skills you can have as a salesperson. Um, the next thing we want to understand, answer their questions. Give them the information they're looking for. Solve problems. Make sure every bit of information you're giving them is relevant. That's what they care about. Do not sell. Please stop selling. That's what makes them run from us. They don't know you. They don't know they want to buy anything from you. Okay? We've got to make it all about them. 
I mean, truly, this is the year of making it all about them, not us, as far as I'm concerned. And if we don't get this, this is ours to lose, I promise you, and we will lose it. Every market I go in when I'm traveling, I see some new advertisement for an online offering to put buyers and sellers together with either agents reducing their commission and actually bidding on the business or without an agent altogether. And Zillow's moving into new markets. Come on, people. We, we've got to step up here. This is ours to lose. It's, it's within our reach if we'll just put in the effort and take it seriously. Okay. You know, customers, we, we really have to get our arms around this. They really are taking over, and they want answers with as little time and effort as possible. We, we've got to learn to see things through their eyes. Okay, so what do they expect? Immediate answers. That's under five minutes. Now, here's what the latest, I'm talking about April of 2018, research says about your response time. Conversion drops by 400% if you wait just 10 minutes to respond to an online lead. Brokers, think about your online lead policy. Update it. You're not, you might as well not have one if you're going to wait. Keep response time to under five minutes to improve your conversion. In short, you know, the early bird still wins it. And we've got to get this. Now, there's, that's really difficult for you guys because your job is, is out in the field, listing and selling real estate. And please understand, I get that. Okay, so that's why companies with, um, you know, call centers and all of that, or if you have an agent or a staff person that are managing these leads as soon as they come in and responding to them, you're going to get a better capture rate. There's just no way around it. What I will say to you is do the best you can do. You know, I can't solve all your problems. I don't know what your brokerages are like on the inside, you know, but we've got to bear that in mind. You know, think about when, again, think about when you're online. You know, I bought a car recently. I couldn't believe the difference in the online response. And guess what? The person with the best online response, that's where I ended up buying a car. They understood it was about me. They asked me a lot of really great questions. They answered my questions. So here we go. The next thing they expect, answers. Please stop trying to get information from them okay uh, one of the one of the agents i work with was telling me recently i said you know well do you are you working with an agent i said stop that they know why you ask that they're not stupid they know that we ask that with thinking that well if you're working with somebody i'm not giving you two more minutes of my time people we are earning this you don't know who they're working with they could be awful there's still a lot of unskilled agents out there. Believe me, I hear stories about them every day. This is your time to shine. Show them something different. For gosh sakes, this is not a major investment you're making here. Just a few minutes. So what do they want? Again, answers. And then they want three things in an agent. And this is, I want you to understand um, what we call customer intelligence. This is information that is gleaned from um, doing research on customers, you know, looking at their responses, how they respond, what they value. And what amazes me is that nobody seems to be sharing this with you guys. Well, I don't know why they wouldn't. You're the salespeople. You're on the front line. Seems to me you need to know this. That's why a lot of what I give you is based on this stuff, and it's what puts you out ahead of the curve. Everybody else, when they finally figure it out, is running to catch up. I'm putting you out ahead of this, okay? So, again, focus on their questions, solving their problems, all right? And, by the way, this, re this works in person as well as online, okay? And, and, you know, and have more than one solution for them. Let them decide. Okay, and believe me, they always want 
somebody live to talk to versus an automated response. None of us like an automated response. None of us. And what understand that what you're doing is building trust, okay? And it builds over time, and it takes time. It's a, it, you know, trust is a central element in all consumer relationships today. But understand, it's developed over a series of interactions. And it can be broken in a matter of seconds. It takes almost nothing to break it because they're vigilant. They're waiting for you to break it. Remember, the new consumer, they don't trust. They're skeptical. Okay, that's why you have to learn this stuff and be careful about it. All right, so they want a market smart agent. What does that mean? I've talked to you about this in other webinars. They want local data. What they really love is market data sent to them monthly via email. If your broker has provided that for you and you're not using it, I don't know what to say to you. It's the easiest way to work uh, your sphere of influence and online leads that we can give you. And it's all right there. If they're not doing it, you do it. This is your business. You're always saying that. Okay, do something. And at the bottom of that email, understand that the statement you want to make is, if you need more particular information, about a specific area, let me know. I'm happy to help. Please stop selling. I just love referrals. I'm never to stop it. They hate it. They don't want it anymore. So use local market data. Now, I think a distinction needs to be made here. And that is that market data can be transmitted you know, a couple of ways. The first way is the way we get most often. And that's that question that we get from people, no matter where we go, what we do, they say, hey, Nance, how's the real estate market? Okay, this is your first opportunity to impress, to be memorable, to really show them you're on top of what you do. And that is where you, you say, well, actually the market's still very strong. Year over year, closed transactions are up 11%, and the average sales price year over year, is up 4% from this to this. That's all they want to know. That's all they're looking for, okay? And so give them that. Now, if somebody starts asking you more specific information, say their house, just say, well, now, if you really want me to do a pricing analysis on your property, I'm going to do a lot more research for you. So we need to set a time for me to prepare that and go over it with you. Two different responses based on what they're looking for. When somebody's just asking you casually, don't go deep into the weeds, you'll lose them. They'll glaze over like a deer looking into headlights. Okay? Give them what they want to know. Are we doing more deals? And what's happening to the pricing? That's not too much for you to remember each month when you guys go over monthly market data. It's, it's your job today, and it's what they want, and it's your first opportunity to impress someone. Then they also want a hyper-local agent, which means they want hyper-local information, which means when we say we're an expert all the way across the county and, and where I live, that can be 50 miles one way in one direction and another in another direction. And believe me, the agents at the far ends of the county, they're not experts in each other's markets. They're not, but they claim to be. Well, guess what? Turns out the consumer knows that. Okay, so what I'm saying to you is if you're going to list and sell real estate in areas you're not as familiar with, time to learn it. Time to step up and learn it because they're not falling for the fact that you don't know where schools are. You don't know what's happening in the area. Are there any new restaurants or people moving in? What are the demographics, you know, age wise? We've got to know all this stuff. That's what really knowing real estate is all about today. And we're claiming that we do, they're finding out otherwise. It's also why in your listing presentations, I want you including that. All the local information, area, you know, goings on, whatever, because you can't, you can't rely on a buyer's agent to have that or to give it. But it does matter in terms of where people buy houses. We all know that, you know, we first started looking at this with millennials we started out with walkable neighborhoods. Turns out we can't use walkable anymore, so we use close to. 
you know, close to, you know, restaurants, you know, clubs, bookstores, museums, whatever. They want to know. And it's not just millennials that want to know it. All age groups want to know. So add that in. And the last thing is personalization. And they really believe that is a sign of respect. And so understand this. If all we're doing is turning thing, things over to uh, technology, be prepared to lose your job to technology. Okay? Technology is a fabulous tool. It, it just does so much for us and makes so many things easy. But if it does your job for you, you will lose your job. You will lose your job, and I don't want to hear you squawk about it. You need to personalize. It's the same way that, that travel agents hung on to their jobs. You know, when everything went online, when we could book flights and hotels and everything online, everybody said it was going to wipe the travel industry out. Turns out it didn't. It sure made a dent in it. A lot of them lost their jobs. But the ones that stepped up, that really got good at what they do, that knew the areas – where they were booking, you know, trips, could give people information about things to do and see, get them at the front of the line, tell them what to do in case of an emergency, you know, tell them about things they might not know about. They're the ones that are making a boatload of money today, and they are very much still in business. But they stepped up. They got better at what they did. So keep the information about them. It is the first sign to them that you are respecting them. Okay. Now, how do we engage effectively? How do we start building this trust relationship online? And this, people, is the power of questions. And what I'm going to say to you is you are what you ask. Okay? What I want you to understand, look at what questions can do. They communicate interest. They also demonstrate market knowledge. They establish your credibility. They demonstrate expertise. And they encourage that prospect to provide more detail, which, oh, by the way, helps us do our job. That's why when you go to other professionals, doctors and lawyers, they ask you so many questions. They're not trying to bond with you. They're trying to figure out how to help you. That's what we have to get our arms around. And, and you know, and I think the difficulty we have with this is that, you know, we – have altogether been based on relationships for decades. And don't misunderstand me, that relationship is still important. They still want to work with a nice person. They want to work with somebody that gets them and responds to them and that they kind of click with. But this is how you start to establish that. All right, so understand this. You, I gave you a couple of handouts. I gave you some miscellaneous online questions you can use. Or responses, I gave you uh, lead mastery. Those are when you really get into probing, you know, what they're after. All of this tells them you understand the business. You know what they're looking for. You know how to talk to this. Don't underestimate the power of it. All right. So, applying all of this. This is, this is so important, you know. What you're doing here, and I want you to see this, you're taking what's called customer intelligence. That's what they call it in other industries. We don't do squat with it. I don't know why, but we don't. That's why I read very little about real estate, and I go into other sales industries and find out what they're doing, which, by the way, keeps you ahead of the curve. First thing we have to do is update your online profile. That's absolutely critical. If you don't, they're going to pass you right on by, Okay. Give them the information they want, first and foremost. That's what you do, okay? Then we're going to segue, and you're going to have to use your, your smarts. You're going to have to listen and when start to ask questions that might lead in a different direction. Something like, well, based on where you are in your search, what in other information would help you right now? See, that's open-ended. Allows them to respond, allows them to tell you rather than you telling them. Would local market data be of interest to you? Would local market data help you? You can rephrase it. You also got my handouts for buyer and seller pre-appointment questions. I don't know why we don't use them. 
you know, one of the first questions for both buyers and sellers that I have agents ask is what concerns do you have about buying or selling in today's market? Better to find that out up front so that you can deal with it, so that you can let them know how you handle that. What that does is, again, go back to trust, and it also puts their mind at ease. I do it in coaching all the time. When I get on the phone with a client, first thing I do is tell me what's going on. Because what I know is if they've got something pressing they need to talk to me about, I don't care how great what I have to give them is, they're not hearing any of it because they've got something else on their mind. Well, take that information and use it in your area. What concerns do you have? I was talking to an agent the other day, and she was talking about a difficult buyer and how long she'd worked with them and didn't know. I said, have you asked them what concerns they have about buying in this market? And she went, no, I have no idea. I said, well, it could be your, your, your stumbling block. Turns out it was. Turns out she found out and she dealt with it. They're now under contract. If we don't ask, we don't know. Assuming is so deadly in sales. Even if you're right, it's deadly. People want to know that you know. They want, and a question and an answer will, will assure them of that. Your lead mastery handouts, that allows you to really probe. And again, look at those. Those are open-ended questions. They allow you to talk. Try to stay away from yes or no's. We know they're dead end. So stay away from them. Okay. Timeline. Everybody wants to know the timeline. Respond by phone and text message immediately. I like people using both. Okay, and identify yourself as a realtor. They don't know who you are. We have much too grand an opinion of, 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 of our importance and whether or not people remember our names because they looked at a listing. They do not. Identify yourself. Now, what I recommend is that you follow up three times within 24 hours and then you put it into nurture mode. Okay. The max follow-up time is really three weeks for an individual agent. At that time, what I'm going to recommend is it goes into your company's leads management, okay, because they, unless you're really set up to do this, you're going to drop them. You're, you know, it's, it's hard to do it. You can do it, and I have agents that do, but be realistic about it because if you can't, then don't, then don't drop it. You know, go ahead and hand it off. And believe me, they'll come back if they're viable. But think about it that way. And remember what I said about the immediacy of the response. Ten minutes, a response time delay of ten minutes drops your ability to convert that lead by 400%. It's got to be less than five minutes. And again, what they're saying is early bird gets the worm. If they're a viable agent and they respond to me first, that's probably who I'm going to use. Okay, follow-up. Please vary your approach. You don't know who you're talking to. You don't know how old they are, what generation they represent. Calls, texts, emails. Nurture that lead, this, whether this is a company, you know, leads management, or whether you're doing it until they tell you stop, until they say, uncle, enough. How do you do that? Well, be a market smart agent. Take your market data email, your local market data for your county or your town, however you're compiling the information, okay, and send it to them. Now, understand these people that you don't know, they're an email list. They are not sphere of influence. Please, please don't confuse the two. You are not expected to get in front of these people. You don't treat them the same way you treat someone that knows you and that you know. This is an email list. We're trying to build credibility here. And local market data is one of the best ways to do it, according to them, not according to me. So how easy is that? You put them in your CRM email list, and they get the same thing that your sphere of influence gets. There you go. That's what you send. I don't know how much easier I can make it. Okay? 
understand that. It's it's really so much easier than we want to think it is. All right. A little bit of a review. It's about them. Please, please get that. I don't care. You know, if you're into tattoos, don't tell me about it, okay? But that's what the, that's the, the tattoo needs to say if you're in real estate. Put a sticky note on your computer screen or your forehead. I don't care. It's about them, not you. Show them your market smarts. Use data. Show them that you're local. You really understand that local market. You know what's going on there. They value that. Personalize your response to what they're after, what they're asking about. Use only relevant information. That's a great sign of respect for them, and they want that. And understand what you're doing is you're building trust, and it's trust for most of us. It's over time. Okay, and it does take time. Think about how someone would build trust with you. Apply that. It's the same thing. And then finally, a reminder that successful people never take their success for granted. Practice. Learn which questions to ask. You'll use different ones at different times. You're going to have to practice this to get it. I don't know any other way to do it. You'll, ha you'll have to because you got to get comfortable with it. And again, with all the online offerings that are coming, and I know that you, you're seeing them. I mean, my gosh, we've got Open Door, we've got Knock.com, we've got OfferPad, we've got Open Listing, we've got, I mean, on and on and on. We've got Zillow moving into different markets. You know, instead of screeching about it, let's do something about it. Let's respond accordingly. Let's show them what we're made of, that we know how to do the job. And when they're going the online route, that may not be the case. And please never underestimate what it'll take to win this. We have to change to remain the same. If we're going to do this work, if we're going to keep our jobs, it's absolutely critical that we change. There's just no other way around it. Okay, gang, that's all I have for you on this. Um, use your handouts. I think they'll be really helpful to you. Learn the questions, when to ask what, and take good care out there. It's been a pleasure. Bye-bye.